Welcome to episode seven of MV Students. We are so glad you guys have made it this far. We are really so proud of you guys and we're so glad that you're here with us and we're gonna continue our series, Go The Distance, today. This one's gonna be quick and to the point and we want you along with the ride because we think uh, these ideas are important for us. So, let's do, do this! Yeah. Let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song said. And I could do all things. I could do all things. Yeah, I could do all things. Yeah, yeah. We came a long way. Hey everyone, I wanna start by saying I am so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for sticking this out, for investing in your walk with God. It matters. And I am praying that from the beginning of this series until the end, that God would use this time to do what he did in Joseph's life in your life, that he'd elevate your influence, that he'd elevate your ability to influence others for the good. And when people see you, that they see you as a beacon of hope and leadership to the relationships that he has entrusted you with. And as we continue our look at his life, uh, one thing I wanna kind of point out is Joseph's boldness. You see, with Joseph, like all the other characters in the Bible, it seems like the older they get, the more bold they become. And I think it's because the older they get, the more time they've spent with their God and the more they recognize who God is in relationship to their fears, their struggles, their anxieties, their worries, everything else that they could face. And I believe that your relationship with God is the most important thing that you could foster and develop because it leads to incredible boldness. But I want you to be encouraged that boldness is not something that happens overnight, but it is something that we can grow in and walk in. I had this conversation with a good friend of mine, his name is Jim, and he has a really unique uh, job. He uh, was a Navy SEAL, and his job was to go into some of the toughest scenarios and toughest circumstances, endure some hardships that I could never even imagine uh, having the boldness to do. And we were talking about what it takes to have boldness and what it takes to have courage. And one of the things he shared with me is that you practice the way you play. And I was like, man, Jim, this is so perfect for what we're talking about in our student community. Would you mind sharing a little bit with our students? And so he sent us this. And so I want to give a warm welcome for my friend, Jim. Hope everyone's doing well. My name is James Allen. I'm a retired uh, Special Forces operator. And I'm a friend of Mike's and uh, been fortunate enough to work with Mike uh, down in Florida on some projects. And he contacted me and asked if I would make a video to do with what you guys are speaking about. And I think you're talking about Joseph. I, I have a saying in the world that I come from, and that is uh, you, you play the way you practice. I, I coached high school football in California and wrestling as well. But when I would teach people things, and let's say they would get tired in practice and they would start cheating they would start changing the form because maybe their legs were hurting or their back was bothering them and they were tired and they would start changing their form to just get through practice. What's happening is you're putting in your mind uh, muscle memory and, and you, you know, learn behaviors that you're doing it the wrong way. And then when the game was on the line or the match was on the line, when you get tired and your mind shuts off, you automatically go towards this form that is not right you play the way you practice. If you wanna succeed in life, practice the way you should. It was 1989, California Highway Patrolmen were uh, on a routine stop, it turns into a felony stop, full-blown felony stop. A gun battle ensues. Two California Highway Patrolmen are behind their cruiser engaged in a battle, horrible gun battle. When they do the investigation, they find out, and it's very sad, but they find out both California Highway Patrolmen, both policemen, were shot to death execution style, meaning they ran out of ammo, people came around the vehicle and just assassinated them. It's terrible. What was amazing when they did the investigation was they found this. See, for years, California Highway Patrolmen carried revolvers. Revolvers carry six rounds, okay? They had just recently switched to a nine millimeter platform gun that held 13 rounds. What they found in each magazine was seven rounds. They didn't run out of ammo. They each had 21 rounds of ammo when they were shot to death, but they thought they were out of ammo. Confusing, right? Those two policemen died doing exactly what they were trained to do. Shoot six rounds, get rid of the magazine, shoot six rounds, get rid of it. But they had 21 rounds of ammunition left. You see what happens when your mind shuts off and when you look at Joseph in the Bible and all he was going through, there were stressful events in Joseph's life. He didn't just automatically get everything right away. There were things he went through that he was learning through, that he was going through in life. But when the stress comes, you fall back onto the way you've practiced. You are what you repeatedly do. 
If you are doing the wrong thing, when things get stressful, without your mind knowing it, you will fall back. You will fall back on doing the wrong thing if that's the way you've practiced. And if you're cutting corners in practice, it'll show when your mind starts to shut off and the stress levels rise, just like in Joseph's life. Stress levels rose very high for Joseph, but he fell back on his faith. He fell back on who he was because he had practiced for those moments. There's, there's a scripture I want to share with you real quick in my beat up old Bible here. And it is uh, in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. God did not give you a spirit of timidity. Why is it often that we as Christians, we read the stories about Joseph, we read the stories about Moses, we read about Noah, we read about Christ himself and Timothy and Paul, but yet we become so timid and so weak at times. You can be very bold and represent this. I've been to battle many times. I've been injured. I've been stabbed. I've been shot. And I love Jesus doesn't make me weak. I think Jesus Christ was the most powerful human being that has ever walked the face of the earth. I believe it. He went through things I couldn't go through. He went through things you couldn't go through. Joseph held on to that faith. Joseph held on to how powerful his God was. No matter how the stress levels were, he had practiced to succeed. He had practiced to win. Because of God's grace through Christ, we get the opportunity to practice the way we want to play. Every day in life we're practicing. And when the stress levels rise up, guess what? No need to panic. You practiced. You're ready. You're ready to go. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit back? Or are you going to step in and be a warrior? You're going to step in and be a little bit like who Joseph was. You're going to step in and love like Jesus with no judgment and say, man, I just want to help you. Don't back away. You can be very bold. You can be good at what you do and love Jesus. It excites me to know there are groups out there like you guys that are trying to seek out what is right. Keep fighting the fight. And as the people that work for me, and have served with me when we'd be flying in helicopters and we'd look at one another right when we were getting ready to land we'd say let her buck and that meant win the moment let her buck do what you were made to do be your best give everything you have so i say to you guys and i say to my buddy mike let her buck have a blessed day god bless you guys you practice the way that you play. And I hope that you're encouraged. You just heard from a Navy SEAL who's done some incredibly heroic things and he got there by applying some of the same principles that we're talking about right here. These things matter and they work. And as you practice the way that you play in life, you increase your boldness in your walk with God because you spent time with him. And I wanna challenge you to expand your boldness this week in three ways. The first one is this, to do your daily push-ups. Push-ups maybe feel monotonous, they don't have, they're not very glamorous, they don't always feel very good, but they matter and they're important. And what I mean by this is push yourself in your relationship with God in one small way every day. Even a small way can lead up to a big thing over time. The same thing is this, push yourself in small steps of boldness. Try some new things that stretch you every day. But really, it's that little bit over time that builds a consistency, a testimony in your life. So when the moment comes, you don't shy away in fear, but you know who your God is and you're ready to face any circumstances. This happened in David's life. I love this in 1 Samuel 17, 45. David is coming up to a man like three times his size, and he is about to take him down, and he has this incredible, ferocious courage. And this is what he says. says, David says to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. David had a clear understanding of who his God was, and how did he do it? He was a shepherd. He was out in the field taking care of sheep. He wasn't a person of battle, but the stuff that he did while he was a shepherd built his testimony with God. And I believe that if you do small things daily with God, they lead up to big things later. 
So the first thing is do your daily push-ups. The second thing is doubt your doubt. And what do I mean by that? Is take the questions and the doubts that you have and hold them up against God's word and what you know about God. Sometimes we let our doubts have way too much of a footing in our lives. And if we're gonna grow in our boldness, we need to be active in doubting our doubts. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. He says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. That means those doubts, those questions, those things that kind of lurk with you. It's like we actually um, demolish some of those arguments in our minds and then we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. That means every thought that leads you to something that would be disobedient, every thought that would lead you to shy back is you take it captive. I mean, it's an aggressive term. It's like you recognize the thought and then you take it captive. You hold it down and you say, you will not have a hold of me. And you, and you make it obedient to Christ. And how do you do that? You remind it what God is reminding and calling us to do. If God says, if, if you're feeling thoughts of fear, you take that thought captive and you say, I have a God who tells me not to fear. Uh, it's as simple as that, but we have to be intentional and do it. So do your daily push-ups, doubt your doubts, and then lastly, deal with failure. Uh, get in the habit of failing forward. We're gonna make mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes. And a lot of times we don't wanna put ourselves out there because we're afraid to be embarrassed. But those who fail the most actually learn the most and grow the most. But you have to learn from your failures, so just don't fail to fail. That's why I use the phrase failing forward. When you make a mistake, fail, learn from it, pick yourself up, look why you fell, and then go at it again. And if you continue to get used to failing, you get less afraid of failing. You get less afraid of embarrassment, and your boldness increases. Um, and you need to ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen? And even all the way up to death, what's the worst thing that can happen? We see Jesus face to face. Now, I'm not saying that we do something incredibly dumb or ridiculous, but when it comes to some of the things that we might be afraid of, we don't have to be afraid or shy away from anything because we have God on our side. Um, Jesus says this in Matthew. He says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. In other words, you, you, you can be afraid of people, but, but don't, why fear them if they can kill you, but they can't cure, kill your soul? And instead, the only one that you should be afraid of is God, who, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. God, God is the only one who has the dominion over everything. He's the one that we fear, and he's the one that we answer to. And when we know that he's on our side, just as it says in Romans 8, so uh, let's live with that same kind of boldness. So this week, I wanna challenge us again, do your daily push-ups, doubt your doubts, and then deal with failure. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you again on Monday. And uh, we'll continue to pray that we grow in our boldness as we go the distance.